Welcome to Exploring Alaska Native Voices, a show about the evolving character of Alaska indigenous life in a world society. As this song says, come together all as one. Hi, my name is Bronwyn Jones. I'm a subsistence resource specialist for the Alaska Department of Fish and Game. Our job at Fish and Game, we are tasked with finding out what communities need, and the Board of Fish uses our research to make determinations about what resources are necessary for them to subsist and continue their lifestyles. And we're all over Alaska. We work all the way from Barrow to Ketchikan. In Tyonic, People spend their summers at their family fish camps in order to harvest enough king salmon. Hi, I'm Janelle, I'm Tabono, and I live in Tyone. We're fishing down here, king season. This is a morning catch. Very good so far. Got a few reds, some great kings. Fish camps are usually passed down um, from generation to generation and families come together and work on harvesting fish. People come from the village or from Anchorage or surrounding areas to attend fish camp for at least a few weeks and they share nets in order to get enough fish. It's important to be friends with the people that we're working with over here because they understand the importance of our work and we understand what they're doing and how important it is to them. So we help each other out in that. Often people will approach us with a, a four-wheeler full of fish and tell us that they have fish for us to sample when we weren't even looking for them. Another red! There you go, Yay! There's a male one. Not anyone can come and use a fish camp in Tyonic because Tyonic owns its own land and only people that are invited are able to come over and use Tyonix fish camps. You do not have to be native to subsistence fish, you only have to be an Alaskan resident. Subsistence in Alaska is, has a thing called subsistence priority. So over recreational fisheries and commercial fisheries, subsistence will be the last fishery to be shut down if there's ever some sort of lack in resources. This has been a really unique project because people are so welcoming. They don't mind us cruising around in what they call playing with our fish. We, we stop by and they chat about the weather with us and we sample the fish and speculate what the next tide will be like. It's really nice that everyone's so welcoming. For Tyonic people, the kings are the best fish that they can get. They value the king salmon because they're the earliest king to arrive. They like the way that they taste. The way that they process the fish is specifically uh, designed for king salmon. The king salmon show up about May 15th, about when the fishing starts. Uh, some people think that they're coming a bit earlier now, and they wonder if that's why they're not harvesting as many, because they're not allowed to fish before the 15th of May. The fish that are harvested in this fishery come from a variety of different uh, stocks that are going up different rivers. And so we take fin clippings and the genetics lab can determine based on a previously established baseline where these fish are heading um, by what river they match with. It's important for us to get as many samples as we can so we have the most diversity in the fishery. I do see a lot of the fish here heading to the Chewit River. Um, you can go down to the Chewit and just see the fish coming in right from the inlet, so it's, it's likely that a lot of the fish are heading there. Subsistence harvests in Alaska only represent about 1.1% of the entire harvest of fishing game in Alaska annually. Each year, uh, some Tyonic members try to put on what they call a culture camp in order to teach youth from both Tyonic and some other villages in Anchorage about subsistence fishing. For Tyonic youth, fishing for king salmon is a good way to establish uh, cultural practices that their grandparents and their grandparents have practiced before them. 
Fishing for King Salmon brings different generations together and they learn harvesting methods that the Dena'ina have been doing for many years. Often kids learn how to process king salmon from their grandmothers or their aunts or their mothers and they often put them in smoke houses and strips. That's called bubba when they slice the salmon down the middle and brine it and then smoke it for a few days. Sometimes people can it after that and sometimes people just save the strips. People often think that set netting for king salmon is really easy, but it's actually a pretty big ordeal. The nets are really large and heavy and they get tangled easily. So people often have to bring them from their house on an ATV down to the beach, set them out straight, set a running line to a stake which they had previously set into the inlet at a low tide, attach it to that, and then wait for the tide to come in. And they also have to set aside a few days to process and deal with all the fish that they get from the nets. Subsistence is much more than depending on the ecosystem for survival. Fish camps and the associated activities which take place there continue to be an important tradition of the Tyonic people. The Dena'ina language, spirituality, and identity are all embedded in this ability to survive off of the land. As an anthropologist working in Tyonic, I've learned that my job is more than just coming over and studying people. I've formed some really awesome friendships that I plan on maintaining beyond the length of this project. And I hope that the work I have done here in Tyonic will help the Tyonic people maintain the lifestyle that they would like to maintain. <laughs>